So for development economics, we'll be using this particular book, which is Todaro and Smith. And uh, let's look at what, what uh, chapter one is talking about. Chapter one is economics, institutions, and development, a global perspective. So whenever you look at any chapter, before even reading the chapter, you make sure that you will always read the headings, always, without reading anything first, just read the headings. So economics and development studies. So, and just think in your head, okay, what this heading would have told. So have some kind of questions in your head. Okay, economics and development studies. So maybe this particular part is talking about what is the difference between economics and development studies. The nature of development economics. Okay, what this part would be telling is maybe uh, what are the characteristics of development economics? Maybe, I mean, it may or may not be true what author has discussed this, uh, discussed in this chapter or wherever, but you make it a habit. So whenever you read any chapter, you will always read the headings first. Uh, economies as social system, the need to go beyond simple economics. Uh, what do we mean by development? So this topic must be talking about uh, what is the meaning of development? So how do you measure development? And uh, what is the new economic view of development? What, is the, what was the traditional view of development and so on? Here, they have also talked about the sense capabilities approach. Uh, so I'm just giving you the gist of the chapter first before you, before you move on. And uh, then they talk about the three core values of development. What exactly should constitute development always? Right? Then what are the objectives of development? So these are, these are the basic chapter, but again, important. Uh, so we need to do this. And I think I'll be completing that in two, three parts. So have a look at this. In this particular chapter, authors, they have started by doing some comparison. They say, why don't you compare the life of a typical family in US, which is a developed country, in Latin America, in Africa. And then you will see how all the people in different parts of the world, they live in a very different fashion. Their standard of living is very different. How exactly they are able to say this. They just say, well, why don't you imagine any American family in US? Maybe mother, father, maybe one children, two children. Both children will have their own rooms. Family will have a lot of gadgets. They will have two cars. Their standard of living is good enough. Both parents are educated. They know where their child uh, will be going, in which kind of university they should be going. After doing courses from university, they have different opportunities which are available to them. They can pick up any particular path, whichever path of career they want to choose. Right? Whichever path of career uh, they want to choose. Then they say, now you look at a particular family in Asia maybe a Southeast Asia, rural Southeast Asia. Family will typically be of eight to nine people. All of them on an average earning very less. Children, if at all they are going to school, they would not be completing more than their primary education. Their education will be stopped at various points. Why? Because they will have to support uh, their parents financially. Parents may be, uh, may be illiterate or, or would not be possibly literate in a way that they can help their children in education. They don't have good financial means. Just imagine this. And then they say, now you compare the countries like Latin America. And while comparing, them, comparing that, they say, just imagine that uh, there are two kinds of world which are living in one particular city. This may be true for India also. But just imagine this. So they say that on one side, there are people who are living in, uh, uh, in penthouse. Right? And they are overlooking sea. They have everything whatever world has to offer to them. And then on the backyard of this penthouse, 
there is another world which is living they don't have means to uh, means to even buy two meals a day they don't have proper education they don't have proper occupation so there is huge inequality and then they say now imagine a particular family life in africa a very slow moving village in which um they have very rudimentary tools there is no pakka road they don't even know whether these things exist their only luxury is that uh, they are getting radio from somewhere or they are listening to some songs of someone uh, so they don't even know that the kind of the luxuries which other world is experiencing they don't even know about it so in a way in a way they say that they are better off why because they don't know i mean they know that they are poor but they don't know how much poor they are in relation to others but if you look at people in asia and you look at people in latin america you will find this that uh, uh, they are relatively poor also they will be people in the same country who will be very poor and there will be people in the same country who will be very rich right who will be very rich now what happens is that uh, relative poverty is even more cruel this is what they are talking about that when the means of transport were not developed when means of communications were not developed then also it is fine people are living in their part of the world but just imagine now internet is 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 so developed uh, communications are so developed uh, transportation is so developed that the world has becoming is is becoming increasingly small place to live on the click of a button we know what is happening in us or what is happening in myanmar what is happening in sri lanka and we are too much dependent on each other for various things on our own dinner table we are using the products which are made in china some things which are made in japan uh, so if something is going to happen in one part of the world because of the advanced means of communication and advanced means of transport it is i mean that particular thing is not going to be confined to only that particular part it will have a rippling effect on the other parts of the world also and then they talk about the different views for development economics so one of the view is that it is not a distinct branch of economics they say this that okay you have one subject but it is not a distinct branch of economics i mean development economics is also using uh, uh, the different fields of economics only like for example micro macro trade etc and it is applying those things on the specific economies of asia africa latin america like that there is an another view which comes it says this that uh, development economics is not like traditional economics because if you look at traditional economics it is applied mainly on the advanced capitalist nations like you uh, like of us uh, europe uh, like that right but they say that development economics is more or less concerned with the economics of underdeveloped nations of uh, asia africa latin america and these countries they have varying ideological orientations and they have various i mean very diverse cultural backgrounds right so that is an another view that uh, which which gives importance to development economics <clears throat> then the authors they talk about what is traditional economics so if you look at traditional economics what is traditional economics actually works with uh, it is concerned primarily with what to find out the efficient outcome right to find out what is the least cost combination of inputs that's what it does to find out uh, how to have the growth with the growth in resources also uh, so because you want to produce more and more goods and services to satisfy ever increasing wants that is what traditional economics is 
and this traditional economics util isn't it dealing with the advanced capitalist nations in those capitalist nations you can still assume that you have perfect markets isn't that dealing with consumer sovereignty and automatic price adjustment yes it is right uh, then are decisions not based on marginal outcomes like for example um, utility decisions are based on marginal utility cost decisions are based on marginal cost no isn't it uh, uh, that that while calculating utilities or while finding out utility maximization you don't you assume consumer to be rational you do right don't you assume that this is a centralized this is um self centered decision making i am going to ask myself what is going to increase my own happiness that's it right ha huh? so that is what the traditional economics is dealing with and then they say on the other hand you have political economy so political economy is of course it is bringing politics in also into economics the relationship between politics and economics but there are people there are people in the power and who who have who have that power to influence decision making who have the people in power who are the people in power those politicians bureaucrats they have the power to uh, to to what you call uh, effect the economic decision making no then development economics is uh, also uh, development economics is even is even wider than political economy this it is dealing with what one it is dealing with least developed countries under developed countries developing countries in developing countries most of the resources are scarce and not only they are scarce they are there are idle also so development economics is concerned with the productive usage of these scarce idle resources no right and to have the sustained growth over time plus it is also related with the economic social political institutional mechanisms so it deals with these things it deals with economic problems social problems political problems i mean even in in your entire development course you will see the models which will include political decision making you will you will see models which include institutional decision making also you will see all that so and all of that with an objective that how can you improve the standard of living of the people of the underdeveloped nations of asia africa latin america uh, socialist transition economies those who were very socialist countries earlier but now they are transiting into market economies and in these economies or in these underdeveloped countries in these least developed countries most of the markets are imperfect they are not perfect as the advanced economies <clears throat> consumers they do not have proper information producers they do not have the entire information uh, the structural changes are taking place in the economy uh, so structural changes taking place in the economy is mainly maybe you are bringing up new economic reforms uh, to change the structure of the economy maybe from agriculture to manufacturing from manufacturing to services and so on right so this is what this chapter is going to talk about right so in this recording for the first chapter we've only discussed about what is what is the scope of you can say development economics not necessarily even the scope but we have just defined what traditional economics development economics is right so we'll take up uh, the rest of the things in the next class thank you very much